Please listen carefully. Hello, universe, and welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. I'm Christy Jansen. And I'm Summers McKay. And we're part of the team behind the Optimist Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day in order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day to help make it one focused on solutions. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning international journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. And also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, home office-worthy podcast. Today is Thursday, the 4th of February, 2021. I just wanted to do a quick shout out to our global team of journalists and some new folks who have joined the team from around the world. Uh, we have a new writer who has joined our writing team from Costa Rica. So welcome to the team, Ariel. We are delighted to have you at the Optimist Daily. How are you today, Christy? Good. I'm fine. I'm happy that it's a bit sunny out, even though it's chilly, but uh, I am flying easy in my home office, you know, I'm just <laughs> hanging out. I don't know. I was looking at my headline and that's why like, it made those words. I know my mind. It, it was clearly this moment where you forgot that you and I were having a conversation. <laughs> So likewise, Christy also welcomes our new writer to the team (laughs) and in particular now. Yes. So it is for Ariel to be on the team now. And I'm glad that we have all of our writers who are with us. And it's fun to talk to them in our editorial meeting, which is coming up right after we finish this. I know exactly. Which is coming up in 18 minutes. So everybody, we're going to keep it somewhat crisp today. So yesterday, I got pretty intense about racist stereotypes and racist behavior and the value of diversity and inclusion and the ways that media companies can have a message or an impact in that. And soon thereafter, after I wrapped up my work day right around, I think about 3.50 p.m. is when I scooped my daughter back up and she and I were dancing around the living room and I decided to put on Lady and the Tramp on our Disney Plus. And, you know, this is the first time that I've seen it, but there was a warning at the beginning of the film. Now, I like Lady and the Tramp because my daughter loves to watch dogs. She loves everything dogs. Everything is doggo, doggo, doggo. And actually, our dog likes to watch dogs. So it's just, you know, it's like a family fun movie. But I have often felt a bit uncomfortable with the vignette in the song, We Are Siamese, if you please, right? The the ballet between the two Siamese cats. It doesn't feel good. And as a mother, I've thought there will be a time where I need to explain to her why this isn't good. I've likewise felt the same way about Peter Pan and some of the songs that are in Peter Pan and even Jungle Book. Well, it was like our writers were in my bedroom, kind of like when creepy Amazon Alexa starts recommending things that she hears me talk about, because my headline today, in fact, discusses what happened next. What happened next is that a warning popped up on the screen, and for uh, just a brief period of time, it warned of the content. So the headline I want to talk about today is, Disney Plus protects kids from watching its old content with racist stereotypes. So Disney Plus is pretty ubiquitous. I think kind of like, you know, the Super Bowl was for TiVo. COVID has been for Disney Plus. Everybody's glommed on, just like we were talking about with Netflix yesterday. But Disney Plus had, I guess, already added content warnings to flag some of the racist content. I, for whatever reason, had never seen it before. The warning reads... This program includes negative depictions and or mistreatments of people or cultures. These stereotypes were wrong then and are wrong now. Rather than remove this content, we want to acknowledge its harmful impact, learn from it, and spark conversation to create a more inclusive future together. Now, Disney has gone the next level. If it is a child's profile, if it's just the kid's profile, these movies won't actually be served to the children and they can't even watch them. So they are 
remain so, contextualized. So only they have to like you have to watch Lady and the Tramp with your daughter from your profile. You can't exactly. do it profile. exactly. Exactly. She can't she can't navigate to it herself. And I mean, this kid can reprogram the Roomba to speak different I languages. Know, exactly. <laughs> like this <laughs> kid can out really quickly. Yeah, but exactly. She will break that code pretty fast. <laughs> But nonetheless, I really think that this is just like a very fantastic step. What I liked about it, Christy, was that it's not this cancel culture of ignoring the past. Instead, it's acknowledging it and creating a discussion for him. Right. And that's the whole point is there's a discussion and it calls it out. And we were talking on the pre-taping call just about how even things from like his favorite shows from like the 90s. Sometimes you watch them now, like Friends, and it's it's cringy. It's cringy sometimes, some of the, the jokes. You're like, ooh, you know, because the culture really has shifted now. And mm-hmm. it's it's just interesting now that we're aware of how harmful words can be um, yeah. and how that kind of just tacit racism or sexism or white supremacist stuff can right. really be painful. Yeah. You know, it's just interesting to call it out. And it, it's just... We're not comfortable one way or the other yet, right? It's, it's, yeah. we're in this realignment. And I think it's important to be inclusive and to have a conversation about it at least okay. and not just gloss it over as if it doesn't matter because stereotypes really do, they can be harmful. They can. And, you know, as you said, we're not comfortable yet in which direction or how it's going to go because, you know, my husband was reading a joke this morning about something that current White House press secretary had read. And it was a joke about the size of the package that was presented, you know, for COVID recovery, right? And as he was telling me, as he was reading this quote that she said that had out of the context had been, you know, contextualized by his friends in a social media meme. And I just looked at him and I said, she's a brilliant, talented woman who I love hearing speak. I have no interest in hearing your excerpts on her comments where you sexualize what she's talking about. You're gross. <laughs> and of course, I think he was like, well, I was making a joke, you know, but it is this very fine line right now where we have to be able to say, no, that's not okay. No, I don't find that joke funny. And be willing to, with one another, acknowledge that you might find it funny, but in the context that I live, it's not funny. Or you might find that entertaining, but in the context in which we live now, It's not appropriate. So it's not going to be an easy path to have these conversations, but it's important. Yeah, but and the thing is, wordplay is wordplay, and it it is really important to be aware of these things, but it's going to be an adjustment, and it's going to be awkward. And, I mean, things that even five years ago were completely acceptable to joke about, Yeah. now there's, you go, ooh, you can't really, you know, ooh. You know, I don't know. It just yeah. the, the the implications are better understood. And once you've once the toothpaste is out of the tube, it's hard to put it back, right? To your point, it's not that you can't make the joke; it's that you shouldn't, right? And right. and so we're knowing we're learning a new version of should or shouldn't. But the good thing is that it takes individuals who can reach out and ask a question or pose a challenge mm-hmm. or create a conversation to effect change. And I think that leads beautifully into your story. Yeah. So talking about inclusion, which is something that I I think I spoke about yesterday when when I was talking about the Netflix's attempts to bring inclusion deeply into its corporate culture and also into the shows and media that it puts out there. And inclusion can be anything from different racial identities, backgrounds, ethnicities. But also one of the things I love about Netflix is the foreign films. And and Mm -hmm. I think I mentioned that too. But because when you have a diversity of backgrounds of people of life experiences, you're going to come up with different solutions because you're going to you're going to be solving problems that you didn't even realize were problems because there are things that we take for granted. And so the headline that I wanted to highlight today reads Nike's new sneaker is designed specifically for people with disabilities. The sneaker is called the Nike Go Fly Ease, which is why I was talking about flying easy in my day today. <laughs> I had that in my mind. But oh, it, see, I didn't get your pun. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. So anyway, good um, because I, I was actually looking at the article as we started our little repartee in the beginning of the show. But it's designed with this similar kind of unique style design. It's got the same kind of flashy colors, but it's designed specifically 
to be easy on, easy off. So you can actually put it on without using your hands. And the inspiration for the shoe was largely inspired by a young man named Matthew Walzer, who is a teenager with cerebral palsy. And he had written to Nike back in 2012 saying, hey, I would love to be able to wear Nikes without having to have my parents tie my shoes for me because I don't have full use of my hands. So he has clothes that he can put on himself, but he can't put on his Nikes. And this is something which for people who have the ability to tie their shoes, it would never occur to you that that would yeah. be a problem. Although as a, as a mother who's nursing, for example, <laughs> who doesn't always have use of your, sh your hands, having shoes that you can slip on and slip off easily that are cool looking and right. comfortable and stylish. It's a benefit. This shoe took nine years to develop, but it's finally on the market. And I think this is why having folks, it's been being promoted by an Italian fencer, Bebe Vio, who lost both his arms and his legs to meningitis, and also another Paralympic athlete, Sarah Reinerston. And so when you take this kind of full inclusion and, and people who are differently abled, when you think right. about it, kind of right. like, you know, not neurotypical, but, um, you know, neurodiverse, yeah. neurodiverse, I mean, those kinds of lived experiences give you different problems to solve. But in solving this problem for this young man and other folks who are missing limbs, it actually is a is a useful thing for, you know, busy people who don't have time to who are holding things in their arms like a baby or carrying something and they need to put their shoe on and off. We don't wear shoes in our house, but I have to run downstairs. We have a things in our garage that I have to get. I have to go outside. Mm -hmm. So it'd be great if I was carrying a box of something that I had to take down to the garage and I could just slip my shoes on and, sh yeah. and slip them off. You know, right, it's so let's be, let's just be tactical. These are stylish croc replacements. Exactly. <laughs> so that's why crocs are so great. Because, because I march around <laughs> in my neon pink or neon green crocs and the older kids cringe and, but there is literally nothing I can do. I had to run to the bank yesterday. I had the baby in my hand. I had to go get something for the mortgage and blah, blah, blah. And I ran out the door and it was slippers or crocs. That was yeah. my option, slippers yeah. or Crocs. And I went with slippers and I could have slipped into the Nike easy breezy shoe that is dark. Nice. So that's why I like it. And who knows, maybe this will be a huge hit and then every shoe maker is going to have their version of the Go Fly Ease or maybe not. But I like the idea of widening the menu of problems that are getting solved and you don't even okay. know where they're going to pay off down yeah. the line. So, well, um, and just rethinking, you know, just rethinking footwear, rethinking products, rethinking how we use things, rethinking the circular economy to which they are invested. All of this is exactly what we want to have happen here at the Optimist Daily. We've yeah. got some other fantastic headlines. We today. do. What do yeah. you have, Christy? Well, I really, I almost talked about the lead story, which is about male doulas in Senegal who are fighting for gender equality. And I, I found that a really interesting story about this tradition of a group that's trying to bring that kind of masculinity into the doula. Yeah, <laughs> you know? into, you know? into child, well, and, and into child, into childbirth like and childbirth and not gendering the idea of childbirth care. Right. right. I had an amazing OBGYN who was a guy, you know, when I was looking for an OBGYN, it was really important to me that I had when I was having my baby, somebody who could communicate effectively with my husband. And I felt actually that while I had previously in my entire life only had female OBGYNs, in this instance, I wanted him to feel entirely included in the experience of birth. And so a guy was the perfect person to work with. Yeah. And I love the idea that in Senegal, male doulas will actually bring fatherhood closer to, you know, basically like helping the fathers participate in the birth process and anchoring them in those infants' relationships really early on. I love this story too. Anyway, so I thought that was really neat. There's also an article about a unique trash trap that's are made specifically to remove the plastic waste out of Vietnam's rivers. Some tips on defeating muscle cramps with some key power foods like avocado and coconut water. Yum. A, a special <laughs> camera, which is capturing the highest resolution images of snowflakes and getting even finer detail on these beautiful crystalline structures that come with the snow. 
There's uh, Celebrate Black History Month with these great reads, a article about New York farmers creating a new model for food distribution to feed the hungry. Uh, let's see what else. We've got four ways to support your child's mental health during the pandemic, and a lot of these could actually help a grown-up, too. The U.S. wastes one-third of its food it produces. This project is here to fix it. So food insecurity, mental health, inclusion and diversity, and fabulous shoes. That's what you can get on The Optimist Daily today. <laughs> Among other wonderful stories and solutions, right? Exactly. So, yeah, join The Optimist Daily, our daily newsletter. You can subscribe for free at OptimistDaily.com. And if you become an emissary, you can have access to over 18,000 solutions of articles that we have written over the years. So thank you, everybody, for listening to the Optimist Daily Update. We promise to continue to share positive, solution-based stories with ideas on how you can participate in this changing world and ensure it is changed for the good. We promise to cover the current events with accuracy, legitimate sources, and offer you the information needed most to chart new paths for all of us. Thank you so much for being here. And if, as Summers mentioned, you can become an emissary on theoptimistdaily.com and starting for just $5 a month, you can help support reader-funded independent journalism and be a part of this solution-changing consciousness that addresses our world's biggest challenges with a problem-solving mindset. Please help us keep the Optimist Daily free for everyone who needs it, supported by those of us who can. Thanks so much for being here, and we will be back tomorrow with more solutions. All right, everybody. Thank you.